Hi there, this is Jim from Weird Nashville, and today we're going to take a look at the first in a series of stories about the original shooting models used in the 1960s Star Trek television series. And we're going to begin this video series today with the case of the missing USS Enterprise. The USS Enterprise from the original Star Trek TV series in the 1960s is probably the most photographed ship in history, either real or fictional. Even now, 50 plus years later, it is readily recognizable by the general public, even if they've never actually seen an episode of the original TV series. Its legacy is so prominent that President Gerald R. Ford actually renamed the original space shuttle prototype Constitution to Enterprise. There were three models built for the TV series. The largest has been on display in the Smithsonian since the mid-1970s. A smaller 18-inch model, which had been presumably destroyed, was discovered and sold at auction in 2001. However, the very first model ever built, all the way back in 1964, was appropriated by someone over 40 years ago and has never been seen again. About two weeks before Christmas in 1964, Gene Roddenberry was busy filming the pilot for his new television series, Star Trek. The model maker delivered his starship, a ship called the USS Enterprise. The model itself was about three feet long. Well, actually, it was 33 inches long, but it has been always referred to historically as the three-foot model. The three-foot model was brought out, and publicity pictures were taken behind the scenes. You can see a picture of Gene looking at it as the model maker holds it up. And then you also see a picture of the star of Star Trek, Jeffrey Hunter. But after seeing it, it was quickly decided they would use the model to film all of the scenes featuring the Enterprise in the pilot. A series of setups were done to show the Enterprise whizzing past the screen, as well as approaching and leaving at high rates of speed. These shots would hide the lack of detail in the model. In fact, these shots worked so well, they were actually used as part of the intro credit footage for every episode of the TV series as the Enterprise would go by whooshing through the credits. The only footage they actually used of the 11-foot model in the pilot was a close-up that panned over the top of the saucer and zoomed in to reveal the crew inside the bridge. Here you can clearly see the difference in the rear of the nacelles for the model. There would be three other types before this was done with. The three-foot model would never be lit. It was always an unlit model, whereas the 11-foot obviously would be wired for lights. And the saucer hull was completely devoid of details on the top and bottom. So after the first pilot was shot, the model was put into storage in the event that it would need to be used later. In an almost 180 degree turn from what happened in the first pilot, when the second pilot was filmed, the decision for the 11 foot model was to be used on all Enterprise shots, with the exception of one. The shot of the Enterprise returning from the energy barrier is using the three foot model. A series of publicity photos were taken before the pilot was made with the stars holding the ship or being shown in a scene with the ship in the background. Then an additional set was taken after the pilot was made and the series had been greenlit for additional episodes. You can actually tell whether it was taken before or after by the slightly different looks in the photos. The easiest way to spot the model changes is look for the little metal spike on each of the nacelles as each of these had been removed after the pilot was shot. So the top left-hand corner, you see Spock holding the Enterprise, and it's got the little golden spike on the tips of the nacelles, but Kirk and Spock below it do not. You can also spot the difference between before and after by the differences in the collars and the textures of their uniforms. Now, by the time this episode was actually filmed, there was one other minor modification made to the model, and that was it was modified on the bottom so that it could be displayed on a gooseneck mount with a wooden base. And you'll see that in later photographs. After this particular episode was filmed, the model would go back into storage once again. And at some point between the end of this filming and the next time it would be needed in season three... It got damaged. There's no record of exactly what caused it to be damaged, but there was physical damage that was visible when they went to shoot it in the third season. Speaking of the third season, the episode was Requiem for Methuselah. And it made an appearance in the episode, ironically, as a model of the Starship Enterprise. Now, 
probably the most interesting piece of trivia that you can see about this is that there were no filmings done of the 11-foot model after season two. And in season three, this was the only model filming that was done. So this model has the distinction of being the very first Enterprise ever filmed for the cage and the very last Enterprise ever filmed. Every piece of footage that was shown of the Starship Enterprise from this point on out was reused from previous seasons. Now, after the television series was canceled, it was put back in storage. But Gene Rodberry came back around 1973 or so to Paramount because they had just decided to do Star Trek the Animated Series. So when he came back, Paramount actually gave him the model. And you can actually see the like Polaroid snapshots around the side were ones that he had taken at his house shortly after receiving the model. They're dated November of 1974. The picture in the center of the screen was very widely printed in 1976. It is the last known printed photograph that is definitely of that ship. Now, in the mid-1970s, Star Trek went back and forth in a variety of different ways. It was going to be a movie, then it was going to be a TV series, then it was going to be a movie again. So, sometime around 1978 or so, we were currently at the position where Star Trek was going to be a TV series brought back as a series called Star Trek Phase 2. The special effects company that was given the business this time around was Robert Abel and Associates, and they were mostly known in the late 1970s for some fairly technical animated jeans commercials that used to be on TV. They were actually pretty slick for the 1970s. So Robert Abel came in and they began working on the new USS Enterprise. They asked for the 33-inch USS Enterprise because the 11-foot Enterprise had already been given to the Smithsonian at this point. So the 33-inch was loaned to them uh, and never was returned. Now, many times Gene Roddenberry was asked about where did the ship go? go and he indicated it had been loaned out but he couldn't remember who he loaned it out to he really went out of his way not to implicate robert abel and associates and that might have to do with the really bad blood they were fired after spending like five million dollars for no usable footage and i think maybe he just didn't want to step into that the behind the scenes story is that he asked robert abel what became of the ship and robert said he couldn't remember so gene sort of let it go now, ironically, photographs from Robert Abel Associates surfaced years later showing the work that they had done on the new Starship Enterprise. And you see the two pictures up on the screen about that. I've actually enlarged one section of one picture, although the model's in both pictures. Interestingly enough, there is a model of the original Starship Enterprise in the background. And while it is impossible to judge the scale accurately, the scale is definitely not that of the 18-inch AMT model kits that were available at the time. This model is definitely larger and actually looks like it is, in fact, around three feet long. Now, this pretty much brings us to the end of the story about the missing 33-inch model. It is probably the most valuable Star Trek artifact still left on the market today because it goes all the way back to the original series. My guess is, in all honesty, it's probably already in the hands of a private collector because if you do have it, and you say something, then you are obviously in possession of stolen goods and the police have the right to take it away from you. So my guess is whoever has this is going to keep their mouth shut and just enjoy their little piece of Star Trek history. In the coming weeks, we will be releasing several other videos in this series. There were other shooting models used in Star Trek. There was a shooting model built and used for the Galileo shuttlecraft, the Klingon battlecruiser, the Romulan Bird of Prey, and as I've mentioned, there was also an 18-inch AMT model kit that was used in the series as well. Please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you turn on reminders so that you can be notified when these next videos and others 